Okay, hey everybody, it's Saturday, um, and it's Abstract Studio Con weekend, which has just been a blast for us. Um, I thought I would uh, draw a little sketch here and do a video of it. I would love to do this live on YouTube, but I don't have quite enough followers yet to do live uh, things on YouTube, so I have to record this and then post it. Um, I'm one away from 700 followers, and you have to have 1,000 followers to do a live video on YouTube. So, um, I have a goal. Um, so, I guess I am going to be drawing. Uh, this is clearly not going to be Freddy Themer, so it must be Kachu. And... I always just kind of start off with this very simple outline of a face and even kind of a bland expression. And then I just, I try different things for the expressions that I want to end up with. But at least I just first get her there on the page. So, you know, now she's kind of there. Um, when I was doing the live feeds, um, I did a live feed on YouTube two days ago and yesterday on Instagram. I was explaining what I look at when I'm drawing. Um, I'm looking at the skull that's underneath the skin uh, so that I know how the skin works. So um, I see the cheekbones here and the cheekbones there. and. Uh, the orbital cavities here for the eyes, and this eye's a little off. Get right there. Constant adjustment on the eyes. I don't know if it's that way for everybody. Look, I have a double pupil, just like the Martians. Um, that's cool. That's what, whoop, that's what this little bitty eraser is for. Go in there for those little spots. Um, when I get into Kachu's face, there are things that I look for. I've already started that little uh, peak on the eyebrow there. She has that peak. Um, she has this short um, uh, nose. It's always a little bit red because she doesn't take care of herself, I don't think. And uh, hairline, she has a cow lick up here where her hair is. Her hair is just grows in that way, that it always has a little deal, and that's what gives her that kick out. So she has a natural poof. I'll leave that there and get rid of the other searching lines, you know, lines where you're just kind of like this, where you're just kind of trying to find the boundaries of where this is all going to go. I'm thinking about where the top of the skull is and how it goes back and how thick that hair is on top as I draw. And this ear's a little high, so we're going to pull it down to about there. It kind of goes like top of the ear to here, and then typically bottom of the ear to there. But when you get to see like old men, their ear goes down to there. <laughs> we're not going to do that to her. My ear's not that big yet. Maybe someday I'll have those great big Dumbo ears like old men get. I can only hope and pray I will. There. The ear is a complicated thing, isn't it? Um, and they're not all alike. Like some people can hold an, an Apple, I, um, Apple speakers in their ears. Some people cannot. I cannot hold Apple speakers in my ears, but my wife Robin can. There, that's probably way more than you wanted to know. Okay, the, um, her hair is right, it's right here, it starts getting thick and curly, and I automatically just start going for that, even if it's gonna be in the front or the back. And where's the jaw hanging, hinging from? It's right there. And there's a shadow where the light can't get in here. I'm going to erase this line here. Let's do it now. 
because we have our little guy right here. And here's the Abdullah Gunglada or whatever that's called, that thing that uh, Dracula likes. And the back of the neck is here. Collarbone that you don't want to break because it really hurts. Uh, the top of the shoulder pin there. That's the medical term, shoulder pin. I just, I just came up with that. I'm rewriting the books of medicine right now. Okay. And let's kind of stop there. Stop, Terry. Terry, stop, Terry. I don't listen to me. Okay, let's finish this out. Okay, there is just, Kachu is just roughed in. Roughed in. Now you go in and clean up all these lines. Basically, all the hard work is done. And if I was at a convention, now I could start talking to people while I finish this out. Because the rest of it is almost like autopilot. You just go in and um, fix all the problems. And it's so much easier to fix a drawing than it is to draw it from scratch. So basically I'm going to go in and make all these features brilliant. And by that I mean like, okay, that's a fuzzy eye, watch. By brilliant I mean darken them in, get them to look like they're going to look in the sketch. And do the toning. A little bit of shadow there on, even though she has these blue green eyes. See the difference between that eye and that eye? That's what I'm talking about, making it brilliant popping. Um, so important not to get the eyes out of alignment. Um, Gosh, it just messes up the whole drawing. And people who, they, even if they don't know what they're looking at, they know if it's wrong. It just looks wrong and they won't like the drawing for some reason. And then the artist looks at it and he knows exactly the reason. Oh, I have the eyes out of whack. It's not, this. all the symmetry is gone. And human beings tend to like symmetrical faces. Um, I'm told that symmetry is what is, beauty is, usually symmetrical on people's faces. And if you look at that, look like look at, say, the newscaster tonight on TV, um, you'll notice that their features are symmetrical, unless you're in a very small market. <laughs> that was a tacky joke. Uh, no real lipstick here, just putting in color to show that we're healthy. Because the first thing that goes is when you feel sick is the color in your lips. So you don't want to be totally pale, then you look like um, you're a goner. The hair, I try not to be too slick with it because um, it doesn't, you know, she's, it's not like she's uh, using hairspray and she's modeling for a photo shoot. Um, she's outside, it's windy, uh, this hair is wild. So, I go for that. And these darker outlines on the outside um, started with, um, I don't know, the late 19th century uh, with the illustrators back in those days that were drawing for print. Uh, Mucha made it famous. And there was um, Carl Larson. In the Netherlands, he used a thick line. Um, I think Andrew Wyeth used thick lines when he did his paintings. So um, here we are in current day, and you have a lot of illustrators using thick lines or very thin lines, like Aubrey Beardsley. And then uh, you cut straight to today, and you get people using one thin line for everything. Um, do 
Jeremy Bastian, Eric Orchard, Gerhard. Those are the thin line guys that I can think of right off the bat. I'm just kind of in between because I'm more of a cartoonist. I'm not an illustrator. I don't know how to really do all that magic those guys do. They work with light and shadow, whites and blacks, and they actually design the page. I'm just doing my best to get a character drawn on the page. So, I don't know that. I notice it, and I remember who did the pretty stuff, but I'm not the... I'm like a permanent student of the, of the good artists. Um, that's too far back. See that? That's a, that would be a very big jawbone. So we can bring all this forward. Okay. Which means this here. And Kachu has a lot of piercings in her ear. One, two, three, four. I think there's four on this ear. Better? She doesn't look so broad faced right there. So now you can picture um, this, the skull going in there, the um, cheekbone here, the jawbone in there. The jawbone comes in here, has the teeth, and then there's that deal right there, like that, teeth, nose. See it? How it's all in there? It's there. It's like x-ray vision. And an artist needs to be able to see that kind of stuff, just like when a doctor looks at you, you know, they're looking... They know what's underneath you making stuff work, and they're supposed to, so they know when they see symptoms of something's not working underneath all that. Still chasing this here. I think it's like that. And sometimes when I'm, I have to redraw something over and over, that's what I'll do. I'll just move the outline until I think I've got it, and then, then you finish it out. Um, okay, now we've got a scruffy here. I don't want to get too neat and tidy there. I want it to look like well, she just did it with her fingers, you know, which means that would be there. Something like that. I'm getting closer. Sometimes I'm just searching, you know, as you can tell. Um, it's not like I've drawn this exact same hair pattern every time, which is how you do some cartoon characters, right? Blondie, <laughs> whoever would be in the comic strips. You learn one way to draw your characters and that's how you do it. And that's why they could get other people to draw their comic strips for them over the years as the cartoonists got old. Because uh, there was one right way to draw Blondie, one right way to draw Popeye. But the way I draw Kachu is she can change from minute to minute, um, which is not a weird idea. If you look at on, look at all the photos on your iPhone and look at photos of you with your friends uh, over the last four months, and you will see that you guys have many looks, depending on what time of day, you're rested or not rested, um, you're mad, you're happy, you know, all that. Um, you're dressed up, you're being a sloth on a Sunday afternoon. You, you change so much in your appearance. So I've tried to do that with my characters and let them have lives and, and appearances that reflect how they feel inside. I'm drawing at a strange angle for my hand. My hand's not resting on the table like this. It's like this. So when I'm trying to draw these lines, um, forgive me for that. It's the only way I can do it and get this foam propped. Okay. Because she has blonde hair, I usually like to dress her in black clothes so you can see 
where things are. So we'll just darken this in. This sketch that I'm drawing right now, I'm going to put it up for sale on my um, web store at abstractstudiocomics.com. Abstract Studio is my company that I self-publish through. That's me. Um, you could find it if you just went terrymoreart.com, but I use my studio name for everything. Um, so I've been having this virtual con all weekend, Abstract Studio Con, because we're not able to go to Emerald City in Seattle this weekend. And um, by virtual con, what I meant was you can go to the store and buy stuff, and whatever you buy, we ship to you for free, just like you took it home with you and didn't have to pay for postage. Um, so a lot of art, and I'm selling all these sketches that I've been drawing for the last few days, including this one. So this sketch, um, a sketch like this that is, you know, not tight and totally finished. It has a rough look to it. A uh, sketch like this, um, I will sell for probably $200 on a 9 by 12 piece of paper. Okay, we're missing one important thing here. We gotta put the Kachu circle on there. And we use this guy. I bought this the very first year that I was doing comics. So, and I've used it ever since. And I put it very carefully in the middle. Let's do another one on the outside just because it's party. Look at that. Now I have a Kachu sketch. And I'm going to have to get rid of my crazy stuff. My Whatever that was just fell to the floor, went through the floor, and fell straight through to the other side of the world. I don't know what's exactly on the other side of Houston, Texas, but they just got an eraser. Let's go, where should we go, over here? Okay, I hope that you like the sketch, and if you go buy it, you now have a video of me drawing it. Uh, we'll call this Kachu Black T-shirt. So, if you would like to buy this, it's uh, going to be on my website. I'm going to go load it up right now, and um, I, while you're there, this is the time to buy uh, heavy books and get them sent to you for free because I have some really heavy books like my Strangers in Paradise, her story, the Stranger in Paradise Omnibus comes in this huge box set that weighs 12 pounds and it would cost $5 million to mail that to you. Or you can do it this weekend and it will be free. So thanks for watching and um, I'll see you soon. Bye.